Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. Of course, my name is Bryce, and we're doing something, Catherine and I, who's my co-host for the Coffee Chats, everybody knows Ms. Catherine Edwards, we're doing something a little bit different today. We've, we've invited both Jay and my friend Cindy onto this Coffee Chat because the last Coffee Chat we did a couple weeks ago, Jay mentioned something that I think was really, really important. So first of all, Jay, Cindy, Catherine, how are you guys doing this morning? Yeah, thanks. Thanks for having us, Bryce. Of course. Pretty good. Awesome. Doing great. Yes. Thanks yes. for having us. Uh, of course. Of course. Well, Jay, you had asked, because we were talking about the last coffee chat. And guys, I will put that on Catherine's channel. I will put that link in the description box below in case you missed the last coffee chat. No need to watch it now. You can watch it later. But just in case, it will be in the description box. But Jay had said we'd ask for audience questions. And you had brought up this idea of like, and I can't remember specifically what you said, Jay. So I'm going to paraphrase. Like, where are you afraid of making money? Like, Because we, we do know that there is kind of sometimes this fear of people making money and i was like oh my god my friend cindy is like i think she's like a specialist when it comes to the chakra system and just because i've known cindy for a really long time so i've heard a lot of what what she's had to say in like her shala and just offline and about this this idea with with the root chakra kind of being the issue like there's an imbalance in the root chakra when people have this like fear of money, really, whether it's the hoarding of money, whether it's feeling they're not worthy of money. And so I kind of wanted to like do a bigger episode on this because thank you, Jay, because that's such a huge issue with many people, a lot of people. And I don't think they realize that this is actually an energetic issue. It's not just a, well, it's all mental, but it really affects you in a very deep subtle way and so i wanted to kind of start first cindy i know we talk about the chakras a lot on this channel but if we have somebody watching right now that doesn't know what a chakra is what's a chakra well it's, it's the inner the word chakra actually means wheel and it's even the in yoga terms right mm -hmm. like chakrasana. Chakrasana. yeah so, mm -hmm. so the word chakra means wheel and there are these wheels of energy that run mainly through your spinal system. I and mean, you got chakras all over the place. You also have them at the bottoms of your hands and you have in the bottoms of your feet and you have like these smaller chakras within your body. But the, the chakras that we know is the main seven energy centers that run from the base of your spine all the way up through the crown of the head. And there's also known to be like eighth and ninth chakras above your head as well from where we receive downloads. But the ones that are more physical that we're aware of yeah, there's several, you know, the Muldahara, which is the one that you were talking about, the root that's at the base. And then you got one um, and, and they each represent something different and, and they feed energetically out into different places of your body. For instance, the, the root one feeds out into your bones, but it also feeds down from your hips down to your legs and your knees and your feet. And then like, for instance, the second chakra, which is the emotional realm that feeds into um, like your reproductive system and, and parts of the part aspects of your organs. And so each of these energy centers feeds into the body. And then you got, you know, the ones in the in the heart, for instance, it feeds out through your lungs and through your heart and out through the arms and and through your and so it, it feeds all into this area and a little bit into your throat. And of course your throat, you got another energy center there. I'm not I skipped through the 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 third chakra right here as well. So anyways, they each feed into a different part of your body. And uh, so if you have some kind of like physical or uh, not just physical, but some kind of an emotional or mental, let's say, tightness about a particular idea um, for like you were talking about the root chakra usually has to do with safety and security, then uh, energetically it the energetic expression of that will hit down into your base and it could also cause issues in your hips or in your legs or in your knees or in your feet. So it definitely goes into that whole mind body uh, emotional connection that we have. So, yeah, so it affects it, the, the chakra system definitely affects to our or is affected by our thought system and our belief system and the emotions we hold around that. And then that uh, manifests itself physically through our body. So if we have like issues of forgiveness, so about like the heart or we just we, we feel heartbroken or we have just things going on that have to do with uh, the heart issues, giving and, you know, some aspects of giving and receiving. But a lot of it is forgiveness. Um, then you might have experiences with 
uh, closed off. Here, maybe you'll, you'll get some lung issues or you'll get shoulder issues, just depending on what's going on. And how does this, so I want to say too, this, this chakra system, before we get specifically into Muladhara, I want to say too, like this exists in animals as well. I was going to ask, you know, Catherine, we see this with the animal system as well. And also, Jay, you come from like a, a very business background. Do you, when, what Cindy's saying this, do you notice that when we talk about like the 5D economy, the five dimensional economy, is that something like, do you see with, with clients and people that, you know, whether their ability to make money or, or lack thereof kind of comes from an emotional, do you notice that with people like their emotional states as well? It is. As a, I, I mean, it's exactly, she's, you're right on on that. It's, it comes from, you know, their emotional states as far as like, you know, their upbringing, like, oh, you know, money's not the most important thing or God will only give you what you need and all that kind of stuff. Like I got what I got. I'm, I'm I've got everything I need right here. And I think that when people will start to allow themselves to break through the barriers of that they want to they get like anything it's like a, being an addict the first thing you got to admit you got a problem right <laughs> you know what i mean so it's like if you admit that you know okay the problem is i don't i i at black i've started admit that's the first thing is acknowledging it and then from there it's to start to take a look at what what your energetic blocks are i mean what's holding you back where where in the heart is your heart broken you know what i mean is it is it because you may be failed at another business and you're like i'm not trying that again you know what i mean and a lot of that happens for people but you know it's it's uh it's a my experience is that being in the business world and working with people and having businesses and you know not everything's been great every, you know it's just life right but you learn through those experiences so if you take a look at those as not as a learning experience to help you level up so when you do get to the next one you get better and better but that's how you do learn and and i think people what happens is they'll try something uh different businesses or they'll try different creations and it won't work and then that defines them and that's the problem right there they allow that to define them that one particular instance when they were 20 years old that they did something that didn't work out now they're 40 50 in the prime of their careers and they just still are holding on to that and i think maybe kind of maybe tying back cindy back into what you're saying it's just it's there it's stuck there somewhere you know they can't they got to get rid of it so then we got to get rid of those things which is why um that that have that have gotten us to where we're at today and realize they were just they were just experiences and if you could try to look at them like that that they were just experiences and let's just not make that big of a deal about it because it already happened <laughs> let's live let's go to a new phase of life now yeah. And that's part of that shadow work. I know, Catherine, like the, the root chakra for animals, because you're right, Jay, because a lot of that, when you said like how you're raised, like the programming that you receive subliminally from your parents. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but the root chakra, Muladhara, which is where all this comes from, is you're born with that chakra, correct? Like that's a chakra that develops in the womb, in, in uterus, or when you're, and then when you grow, you develop the other as you grow the others start to grow from that as well so that's a deep suited deep rooted like and am i correct in saying that cindy you're born with muladhara right that's the one chakra you're yeah born that's with. one of the ones that the yeah it develops really early some of the other ones it, it's almost like when you go through the it's like you're kind of born with them but then certain ones develop at different ages and stages of your life right. but since the uh your muladhara is, is strongly rooted in safety and security for sure. It is like the one of the ones that is the very, very first to to more fully develop. But then you go through like a second stage of development with, you know, with each one of them. But yeah, that one, since it's so rooted in survival and safety and tribe, that an instinct that it's definitely one of the um, the, the first ones to to start to form itself more fully. So mm -hmm. I know we're, we see this, we talk about like, obviously money is something that's concocted in the human world, um, but it is that, that security system that animals also experience too. And so I think the one really cool thing about the chakra system, at least from my perspective, I know Catherine, you do a lot of healing as well, is when you start to understand what these energy cycles are, things start to become they, so they start to make sense more. And so even though it's hard to heal yourself, sometimes it's a, it's a journey to heal yourself. You start to have like a template of a starting point, a place to kind of like begin to under, to unravel like your bad programming or that bad experience you had when you were 20 years old, that's now informing your decisions now on, on either a conscious or a subconscious level. So do you see this in the animal world too, Catherine, with Muladhara, with animals and their survival instincts and their 
feeling like they have the right to be here or not? Like, how do you see that unfold in the animal world? I think it, there's so much we can learn from what we see in the animal world. And safety and security is absolutely primal with animals. And it's their number one driving force over everything else. However, we see it manifest in a very different way. And even with domesticated animals that we've brought into our lives, and that brings different challenges because then they're having to hand over some of their power to us to look after them. And let's face it, most humans aren't. <laughs> How many humans would we hand over power to look after us to? Not that many. But the thing I think is really important that we can really take on board, because m most people watching this will have one area of their life that's really out of balance. So let's stick to financial today. And if you look at animals, the way they deal with safety and security, you will never see a rabbit burrow or a fox den or any sort of animal house with a fence around it and a, a label, a house name or a house number. They, they will find safety and security in the present moment, and they don't try to hold on to things. If their burrow gets flooded, they move away and build a new one. And that's part and parcel of this being in the, in the present moment. And for me, and this is why I love this roundtable, because we're all bringing different things to it. When we're looking at abundance in any area of your life, particularly financial abundance, which we're talking about today, any time where you've got that desperate desire to hold on to it, then there's an insecurity and you're going to have problems because every single thing in nature flows and moves and never stays static. You've only got to look at the cycle of nature through the seasons, the trees losing their leaves, the animals, some hibernate, some are nocturnal, some are, you know, they shed their fur and they shed their skin. So this obsession with humans trying to hold on to something and not let it move, not let it mo uh, flow, is really manifest to me in this root chakra and how that then feeds so many other insecurities. And one thing I would like to say, again, animals have so many emotions, but one of the things that they don't really do is judge. And if you're wondering, if you're, there's a lot of people that sort of say, I haven't got any money issues because money's not important to me. But if there's any part of you that's judging other people that have got money, then it is important to you. You've just put a barrier up and that's you're not ready to deal with that then. And the reason why I think it's so important to have this conversation and I'm bringing it up today is a lot of our audience, let's call it the, the truth of community, the seekers, the truth seeker community, but look at who the biggest villains have been throughout the last few years. A lot of them are people that have huge amounts of wealth and there's a huge amount of judgment for that. Now, I'm not excusing that behavior in a way or saying that um, uh, that some people don't maintain their wealth by nefarious means, because, of course, we know they do. But look at where so much of our attention has been. And I feel that this is part of the dark side, the spiritual manipulation, the infiltration of the community to really manifest that helplessness in people and that we're judging that wealth and money and abundance in any area of your life is a negative thing. But we all know you can't give from an empty cup. I'm so glad you brought that up, Catherine, because, yeah, it is. An, it, it is and that's what we were talking about last week and what Jay and I we've talked about on my show, too, is this idea of like money and spirituality are not actually separate. Now, money is kind of like I had this conversation yesterday, you know, what you do with things is mm -hmm. what matters. And so money is a tool. It's an energetic exchange. It's a tool to, to, to that you need. You have to have to have a roof over your head, to have food on your table, to, you know, whatever, all the bills that have to be paid or just to even enjoy your life, to go on that vacation because that's important, you know, and you're right, Catherine. We, and, and you brought up such a good point with that because we have been like trained, indoctrinated into this like black and white thinking that in order to count spiritually as a person you have to martyr yourself and that's mm -hmm. actually not aligned with spirituality it's not and and you're right that holding on that hoarding of 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 wealth to to the extent i mean obviously don't be stupid with your money but don't like that hoarding of like trying to like hold on to something you know i'll put it this way like money is a tool my tea i was yesterday we were talking about this my teacher talks about a knife a lot a knife is just a knife it can be used to cut up fruit to help feed your friends and family, 
or it can be used to hurt someone. Same knife. It's the hands holding it that that count. And so it's the and you're right. We we see all these nefarious people. And don't get me wrong. I know that these people are nefarious with an absorbent amount of money. But there's also people out there who aren't nefarious with tons of money too. You know. So it's what you do with it. And uh, you know, I, I um. So so Cindy, can we talk? Because we talked about especially in the spiritual community, there is this uh, assumption that you have to like be a renunciant and live in poverty in order to be a spiritual leader or teacher. And I've laughed because my teacher in India is one of the most wealthy human beings in, in South India, you know, like, like, you know, he's one from one of the most, one of the most famous uh, lineages of yoga. It doesn't change. He's, he's a kind person. He's not walking around. He's actually quite cheap to be honest with you, but you know, but, but so he, he as a person isn't changed by that, but he has, he has money. And, you know, and so Cindy, where does that, what, when we're looking at Muladhara, and I guess that is like what Jay so, said, programming to believe certain lies, basically certain myths, where, when we see with this right to survival, can you expand upon this, Cindy, more where people feel like they need to be, po be poor in order to like be worthy or valuable? Well, I think we've been taught that, haven't we? Like, if you look at any religious, you're talking about people who are seeking spiritual truths. And you look at the, uh, the people, the people of the past, like the renunciants or the ones who go out and live on the mountains or the monks who, um, you know, they're, they're also very, they live in, in, uh, more poverty conditions. Um, we've been taught that since forever. I mean, they've been doing that for, for such a very long time. And, and I kind of, you know, I kind of understand the idea. It's the same thing that, that, that Catherine was talking about is how money has the capacity to to make us uh, to for us to make bad choices with it, or you know, it it might not always bring out the best of us. You know, at times it can actually bring out the worst of us, and so it's um, in in the, very much of the ancient traditions, even in the Vedic traditions with yoga and all that. Uh, you're you're kind of taught that desire and all that is not, it's not like a great thing. Desire is one of those things that you're supposed to avoid because desire can lead you to making, again, some of those bad choices, especially if what you're trying to do is spiritually awaken and that money can get in the way of that. Um, it can uh, uh, divert your attention to other things versus diverting versus keeping your attention on just you know god or or spirit or your personal awakening um so it's you know it's like a distraction but and and i can get that you know I kind of understand that if you are living the life of a renunciant or a monk or a priest or whatever that is but most of us we live the life of a householder and as a householder, we have to be able to, you know, support ourselves and to pay the bills and to, you know, and to do all the things to live as as a householder's money becomes a necessary thing. And if you're trying to live as a householder and trying to keep these values of a monk or a renunciate, it doesn't it doesn't match. Right. It doesn't it doesn't work. There's a confusion up here. Just it doesn't it doesn't work well. And I want to say too, the renunciants of India, um, the monks of India, guys, and I think you're right, Cindy, people are very confused about this. I know, Jay, you, you have a lineage in India, but these these like monks, even though they themselves give up their their worldly possessions, they are very well taken care of by the mm -hmm. temple and by so they're not living in poverty. And that's the thing, too. They are in a system. I want people to really hear what Cindy is saying here, because these renunciants, just because they've handed over their wealth to be a monk or to be a not a non householder, to not have children, to not have a partner, to give up all, mm -hmm. all desire. So no sex, no kids, no family. It's all, um, I know there's certain uh, Hindu temples where the monks, if they decide to become a monk, can't even speak to their own mothers anymore because they can't have any communication with females or sisters. But as far as like the practicality of being alive, somebody else is paying that bill for them. And I know there's a temple here in Atlanta. I don't know if you've ever been to the Mandir here in Atlanta, Cindy. It's beautiful. And they have monks that live there. And these monks live in the lap of luxury. Now, they might not have their own checking accounts, that they're, but they somebody else is paying that bill for them through donations, through whatever. So 
I want you guys that are that think that people should be martyring themselves, even these monks who have given up their own power to have their own money are still having their bills paid for them. Somebody is still paying that bill, right? Still keeping the lights on, still keeping food. So, so, and I think, I think what happened, I know Catherine, you said this a lot, a little bit of information can be a dangerous thing. And so I think, cause people say that to us all the time that I know Cindy, you probably get this at sacred garden, but it's like, well, you should be teaching yoga for free. And we're like, no, we wouldn't be able to teach if we taught for free. Cause somebody has got to pay the rent. Somebody has got to keep this, the business going and, pay the bills and um and and people will say well, like oh in india some of the, the gurus taught for free well no they didn't and that's why a little bit of, of knowledge is is a dangerous thing because what would happen especially like krishmacharya who's the grandfather of of modern day yoga like my teacher patabi joyce or my, or my teacher's teacher he when he as a little boy went to go study with krishmacharya he didn't have any money so what did he do he became krishmacharya's slave basically he did all of his laundry he went and did all the grocery shopping for them and so there was an exchange of energy that was happening he wasn't just going to krishmacharya's house and like teach me and then going home no he lived with krishmacharya and became his his in-house servant a bunch of other boys too in in payment for the teachings if that makes sense does that make sense mm -hmm. yeah. so so yeah and we get that a lot i know um and I'm saying that to, I know, I don't, I don't know, Cindy, if I told you about this, but we get that a lot. Jay, uh, Catherine and I, with our sponsorships, we have people like leave the nastiest comments that we should be subservient and enslaved to the viewer and give of our energy and our time without any sponsorships, without any commercials. And so where, so Cindy, when somebody, and it's a projection of their own, right? And we call mm -hmm. it entitlement. So wh where is that coming from? If somebody is watching it is pissed off because their favorite podcaster, regardless of whether it's one of us or somebody else has a sponsorship and they have a little commercial and they don't think that that, that, that entertainer should, should be paid for their work. Where is that coming from, Cindy? That's obviously a root chakra injury, right? Oh my gosh. Yeah. That could be rooted from so many things. And well, I mean, I think we also have to understand that money is highly symbolic of certain things for us. Uh, one, and I actually have a, I actually wrote something of, about it here at one point, but these are some of the things that, um, and you, you might be able to add to this list as well, but you know, money is, it's more than just like money, right? It's it's symbolic. It means something to us. And we are already mentioned how it it's it symbolizes safety and security. And mm -hmm. that's, you know, means a roof over our head. Also, you know, it symbolizes freedom because money buys us the freedom to be able to do the things that we want to do and not having enough money can feel restricting to us. You know, it signifies uh, control and power. You know, wealth and power are often intertwined and money increases our capacity to be of influence and have control over our own lives. It represents self-worth. And I think that's that's a big one right there, um, too, Bryce, with what you're talking about. Our feelings of worthiness can be influenced by how much uh, money we have. You know, obviously it symbolizes success. Our success in life is often measured by how much money we make. And and on top of that, um, and you mentioned this as well, that money is also like a magnifier. It it, magn it magnifies like our core values. Um, uh, so if we lack money, then it will magnify certain things about us. Or even if you... Um, if you have a whole lot of money, it will magnify things about us. And, and I think that's the big triggering point, point is when you start to, to talk about money or sponsorship or anything like that, if we're feeling, you know, a lack in any way, or, you know, if it's, it's, it's hitting on a deeper level than just money, it's hitting on things like self worth and all this stuff. And, you know, so then when you start to bring money into something like this, then yeah, there there could be like this this kind of almost subconscious triggering that's happening when sponsor you like when you receive sponsorships and stuff like that. Something that's more deeply embedded. They don't even realize why they feel that way. I was like, I don't know why I feel you know triggered because these you know you're receiving. I mean, why would they? It it, it goes so much deeper than just simply money. It could be just triggering all these other subconscious mm. insecurities and um, 
and, you know, feelings of, of lack of self-worth or, I mean, it could be coming from so many different places that they don't even realize uh, where it's coming from. You know what I mean? Cause it, cause it means money symbolizes it is such a huge uh, part of our lives. And we have very strong feelings about it. And Jay and Catherine, feel free to jump in if you guys need to, because this is such a fascinating topic. And I will say too, I get that because I think when we started our channels, or at least for me in my experience, when I started Esoteric Atlanta, my shala that where I, where I was teaching every day in Johns Creek had just shut down. And so I think that there was with a lot of the viewers and, and us on screen, there was there was a camaraderie, right? Misery loves company. We were all struggling. We were all in this situation. But then when when someone starts to get success or starts to get that sponsorship, it's 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 I think a healed person, a person who is aware of their own insecurities would be happy for that person. And we do we have most of the people are happy for us. I want to say that most of our viewers are very happy for us. But we have those few that get very abusive in the comments. Like, how dare how dare we make money doing YouTube? when literally we put so much effort into our videos. And I think you're right, Cindy. I think what happens is misery loves company. When you're broken, alone, and afraid, and scared, if everybody else is broke, alone, afraid, and scared, then it's not so scary. But then once other people start to like step out of that, the spotlight becomes more on you. Does that make sense? Am I saying that? Like all of a sudden that's, it's a reflection on yourself. Like, okay, I need to step up. Cause I know when I see, I love Andrew Gold. Catherine and I have talked about Andrew Gold a lot. He's a great podcaster and he got a sponsorship a few weeks ago and it was for poop pills. It was for constipation. And he did the best job with that commercial. He made it funny. He made it interesting. And I was so happy for him because I love his podcast. And I thought, oh my God, great. He's got a sponsorship. That means that he's going to keep making more podcasts because I like and it's for free it's on YouTube so you know it's some um, to you Catherine and Jade do you guys have, have anything you want to add to that about like the fear factor and this the 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 subconscious reaction to when other people around you are successful so I'll just say this is that I think it's important to acknowledge like when you get when you have a show or you have or you have a sponsor I think it's really like our, our position has always been me myself and April is if someone left a comment, two things we don't do. We don't respond to the comment. Number two, we never justify why we did what we just did. Mm -hmm. and, and eventually they go away because I believe if we say, well, you know, we're only doing this because we're mm -hmm. doing this because we have to run a business. We're doing this because we put a lot of F because, 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 because. Now we get into a justification war with this crazy energy that who the hell knows where they even came from. Right. So for us, it's just a complete, you know, I would say we stand firm on look with our convictions that look, we feel like, hey, you know what? We are we got this cool sponsor. We believe in it. We have a platform. We have an obligation because we have a platform to share it with people. Take what you want, throw the rest away. You don't like it, then whatever. I mean, that's not my problem. It really isn't. And and I think that with a lot of people in the communication world, especially alternative communication or independent community. I mean, think about it this way. Logically, nobody has any problem buying Amazon. Nobody has any problem yeah. going to Walmart. Nobody has any problem going to Netflix. But all of a sudden, the independent person that you somehow have some sort of personal connection with, you have a problem with. So that, to me, in from my perspective, and again, this is only my perspective, doesn't deserve acknowledgement. And so yeah. I don't give that acknowledgement. I won't, having, I, having that boundary, that's actually a healthy mold, yeah. isn't it? And when you have a, a good boundary like that. I think it's really important. I think that's such a good point, Jay, because the thing is, the beauty of these discussions is they bring up something in everything, in all of us. And we're all going to have different triggers around this. And we're all going to learn how to deal with things like this in different ways, because no one gives you a, a guidebook for life. You know, that's the beauty of it. And how boring would it? Because none of us lot would follow that guidebook anyway, would we? <laughs> so I think this is the beauty is understanding and, and having honest conversations about triggers there's not a single human out there that's not going to have something that they're triggered by and when we can acknowledge those and be open about them and recognize that that's showing us our work which we already talk all talk about then that's the important thing you know i for example have done so much work and jay you've really helped me with this and rice by the shadow work channels uh, challenges and things you know the, all of it we're learning new skills all the time and I've just realized just how much stress 
in the past from my life has been caused by a lack mentality or or feeling that it's a lack and when you're in a position where you can really serve you know i i've been looking a lot at the difference between um you know between the energy of sort of a, it's quite important the language behind it that fixing energy and helping energy you know people might say what's wrong with helping but who are you helping? Are you helping it from your energy to feel good? Or are you generally helping? Was when you, if you're in a fixing or a helping others type energy, just the fact that you're labeling it as helping others, that's going to have an energy of sort of lack, exhaustion with it quite often. But if you're in a serving energy, then it's uplifting, it's really energizing. And I think quite often when with we've got these things coming up in ourselves whether we're feeling it when people are triggered it triggering us by comments or feedback or if someone's watching this and it's triggering them the great thing is like we always say fantastic there's your work there's your question why because as soon as we step into judgment we're giving our energy away and we're basically telling the universe if we don't want someone else to have that we're basically giving a very clear message that we don't want it for ourselves you cannot be successful in an area of your life if you're begrudging someone else and that that, that something else of any living entity if you're begrudging that in anyone else unfortunately you're going to be putting a blockage to getting it yourself and that is awesome. I actually want to take a moment, um, you guys, because I do want to talk about our our sponsorship, ASEA. And what I'm going to do, because after we talk about this, I'm actually going to hand the ball to Jay and Catherine to talk a little bit about ASEA, because I'm actually going to go get a ball quickly, because after that, I want to talk about what people can do to help them heal their Moladara. So I'm going to step in the next room. I'm going to let Catherine and Jay take away, give you guys a little bit of more detail about our sponsor, ASEA. And Jay is right. I'm not just using ASEA as a means to an end. I actually have been offered many, many sponsorships through my channel. You get them all the time. And I've always turned them down except for this one because I actually do believe in this product. I know Cindy's had experiences with this product too. This is an incredible product. Um, it works on the physical and spiritual level of, of helping you. It's a tool. It's not going to do everything for you. It's just a tool, but it's an incredible, incredible tool. So I not only am so grateful to ASEA for giving me the financial opportunities to make this stuff free for you guys watching but I'm also grateful for ASEA for the, the benefits of health and also being able to share it with everybody else. So take it away, Catherine and Jay. I will be right back. Give our, our information, uh, give some information to our audience about our awesome sponsor, ASEA. I'll be right back. Okay, well, I'll go. Ladies first. For me, it's been transformational because I have been a holistic health coach for animals and humans for over 20 years. And one of the things that we all know, and every single one of us does, is we provide solutions for people. And not every solution resonates with every person. So one of the things that I love with ASEA is it works on every single cell of the body. So it's completely non-specific. Whatever your issue is that you need to rebalance, turn back the clock. You know, babies aren't born with um, a lack mentality they are born with an abundance they're born with a willingness to ask for what they want from the universe and that often happens to be from their parents are so the first people and that ability gets shut down similarly our bodies are all born with the ability to regenerate replace cells with healthy cells but that gets shut down so what ASEA has done for myself and my clients is really to bring it right back to those core principles of on a physical level, a spiritual level, an emotional level, hand the power back to our wonderful bodies to take back control of getting our lives back in balance. And that also includes for those that want it, the financial side of things, because when you take empowerment for your health, if you love it, you can share it with other people and benefit financially for that as well. So for me, it's a complete win-win situation. Jay, what about for you? I love it. I mean, I want to give uh, the people watching just a broad spectrum of why we're so passionate about it, why we talk about it. But just a, just a, if I can paint a picture for one second. So just imagine being born in this lifetime with one tank of gas, right? And then the, as you age, that that gas goes down, down, down. In turn, you know, your engine gets slower, slower, slower. The 
the, the company called ASEA developed this redox, which is what we're talking about, that allows you to put gas back in your engine again. So that in turn is effectively, this is my experience that I'm sharing with you from a layman's point of view, is that really it just, it, it's like the light bulbs turn back on again. The car goes faster again. Things start to work again. So you have the opportunity with redox specifically to put gas back in your machine again. So if you look at it from that perspective, that's why we're so passionate about it. That's why so many people are saying, you know what? I look and I feel like 20 years younger. Look at all of us. I mean, I could say to everybody, they can watch our show. They can watch Catherine, your show, Bryce's show. And they can look at us three months ago. Look at us now. I mean, you look at us. Everybody can look at us. We all know we look younger. Everybody says it to us. We all know we look different. Everybody says it to us. But if you don't believe us, rewind YouTube. <laughs> Find out by yourself. It's there. You know, we didn't all just arbitrarily agree to Photoshop it three months later. And this is how we look like. It's <laughs> happening. It's a real phenomenon. So I would say... People, if you want to live younger, longer, you want to feel better about yourself, like Catherine, you said that that was so awesome. It's nonspecific. It's hitting you. It's getting to where it needs to be. So if it's a if it's a thing within your head, maybe a money block or things like that, that are neurologic, things are just out of place. It's going to help you really address those issues. It's going to deal with stuff at a cellular level. So the, the physical benefits, the, the spiritual benefits of it all. Look, this is why we're out here talking about it. I mean, I think that we all are we are all coming from a place of obligation with this thing more than anything that, you know, we really do genuinely feel people will have a much better existence if they explore for themselves. And with the health, there's also the money benefit as well. Now, I will put, again, in the description box below. It's always in my description box. If you want more information on ASEA, then you can either take text Bryce Info or Catherine Info to 321-216-8047. That is Jay's phone number. So that is, it's not just a robot you're texting. Um, and, uh, and, and you can either be, if you want to try this product just as a supplement, that's great. But if you also want to make money off of this product, there's a way to do that as well. And Jay can, and Hillis can help you figure that out if that's something you want to do. And again, I am so freaking grateful to ASEA for giving me the opportunity to continue to create content, to continue to do deep research into crazy weird topics so that we can talk about them on YouTube because that does take a lot of energy. It does take a lot of effort. And, and ASEA is giving me that opportunity to be able to do that for you guys watching right now. So I'm eternally grateful to ASEA for many, many, many different reasons, but most importantly for my ability to now be here on YouTube with you guys. So with that being said, how I wanted to close this off was if somebody's watching this right now and having this like, oh shit moment, like a, as we say in the South, the come to Jesus moment where, um, where all of a sudden they realize that, that they've got an issue that they maybe subconsciously, they didn't realize they have this like weird relationship with money. Well, first of all, I wanted to kind of start, first of all, congratulations. If you figured that out, as Jay said, is kind of like AA, you have to admit you have a problem first in order to be able to then fix the problem. First of all, before I forget, I do want to recommend this book. I know Cindy is a fan of this book as well. Eastern body western mind she does a really good job i've recommended this a lot on my channel going through all the different chakras the the root chakra the one we're spoke of uh, speaking about today specifically is kind of the the base of all the chakras so sometimes if that root chakra is off they all going to be off so it's always a great place to start anyway even if you don't think you have any root chakra um issues you might just want to go and revisit it and check it um so that's a great place to start when it comes to educating yourself knowledge is power knowledge protects i will put a link to this book down in the description box below um and i wanted to show now i obviously i know cindy we talk a lot about uh in yoga using the physical body as a way to exercise and tr actually intentionally trigger these sensations and stimulate these sensations in the body so that they become more aware because the body is the expression of the soul right it is the template of this is shakti as cindy says the expression of that soul and there's something now you can obviously join a yoga class that's great um you can come to zoom say uh, on sacred garden yoga's website which i will put that in the description box below you can take my class or cindy's classes or anybody's classes on zoom if you want to we are also in the atlanta area so you can always come to the class too if you are in the same area but there's something simple i wanted to show you guys with a ball and this is from marnie alton's uh 
website. And this is something you can start doing just at home just to play with that. So the so this root chakra is in your perineum. It's like in your crotch. So, but what, what Cindy, which I think you guys heard her say, when you have issues, sometimes that manifests in like hip issues or knee issues. And so what we have with the root chakras, we also have what we call a bunda, which is a lock and it's called mola bunda. So the root lock and the same thing with the chakra for starting from the big toe, going all the way up through the center of the leg, this inner thigh into that root chakra or into that bunda is also kind of the base of that chakra as well the roots of it so if you have a ball even if you get grab it from your kids you just stick the ball i don't know if you guys can see you stick it just in between your legs and you can just start to squeeze kind of like a thigh master if we have people i laugh i use the thigh master a lot as an example you guys cindy knows this and the older i get the younger the students get and now people don't know what that is <laughs> <laughs> I feel really old. I'm like, go ask your mom. It's probably in your mom's basement somewhere. So it's getting those. So when you start to actually physically exercise your body, you're going to start to feel different sensations and different emotional triggers come up. And so for me, that's always a really great place to start is to really just get into your body and really start looking and observing the, the thoughts, the vrittis, as we say in Sanskrit, the thoughts that come up with something as simple. All you're doing is squeezing a ball between your legs but look at the thoughts that start to come up with that you know and so journaling also is great you can start to journal obviously do your research cindy i'll pass the ball over to you now literally i can throw it to you since um <laughs> since you're kind of the expert on this what is something that that people can do to help them start addressing this root chakra issue well, um, it is to be very much aware of the relationship that you have with money. If if that is, if we're still talking about that, that like yeah. if we're talking, if we're still talking about money itself, is to look at the relationship that you have with it instead of trying to avoid it or trying to blame other people for your for your situation. Um, and that's hard to do. Mm -hmm. I mean, it really is because it, it, it said it hits us on so many different levels to look to look and see um, where like we're we're responsible for our own thoughts. And the first thing is is to is to take that responsibility back for yourself, if you will. And I know that's not very popular. You know, people don't like to hear that. You know, they'd rather be, well, it's their fault or it's the government's fault or it's these people's fault or it's, it's that, you know, it's, fault. it's so much easier to, to keep that mindset. But the first thing that has to happen is for you to take personal responsibility for your own thought and your own belief system. Once you're willing to actually do that, and, and there is a willingness in that because it is, like I said, it's so easy to blame and most of us just get stuck there and stay there forever. But once you're actually willing to take responsibility for your thoughts and everything, then you can start the process of actually going in and healing. And yeah, and, yeah, and a lot of it, a lot of it is very deeply rooted in ancestral stuff. I mean, you could be carrying money blockages that have been passed down to you from generations to generations to generations. And it's almost like it's embedded within your within your DNA. Um, you know, if you grew up with, you know, parents or grandparents who, who, you know, say certain things about money, like, you know, what Jay was talking about, you know, money doesn't grow on trees or any of the things, any of those belief systems. Um, that is where uh, the work really begins and to take a look at that and see how much of that have you bought into, like how how much of the lies are you actually believing um, but yeah, I mean, taking the the root of the responsibility that that has to come first and a willingness to not blame everyone else for for your problems, even even though that's not fun. And I said, it's much easier to to blame other people. It makes you feel better. Right. To take responsibility at first, it's going to make you feel bad. And most of us don't want to like go into that space within ourselves and do that. But that's where any of the work begins. And that's definitely where like abundance and root chakra, because the 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 main emotion that feeds into the root chakra, the negative one anyways, is fear. And fear can be very strong and predominant. And um, it's the base of a whole lot of other stuff that goes on and having to actually face your fear I mean, most of us would rather die than to face our fear. We don't realize how deeply impactful that is for us. So facing your deepest fears, it's like, oh, you mean I have to do that? 
Yeah, you know, if it depends. Yeah, I mean, if you actually want to change your life and to, you know, make a difference and and like some of that, if you have the lack mentality and all that, facing the fears is what's, it's the first step and what's going to take you through it so that you can start to align yourself. We talk a lot about alignment, especially energetic alignment, to begin to align yourself with that, the, the energy of abundance and gratitude and all of those things, but it coming from a sincere level, you know, not just, oh, I'm just going to say these affirmations and hope that my life gets better. You know, it's like really taking it more deeply into what those root of the the fears are and those belief systems and, you know, maybe having to clear and do some of that ancestral work and, and seeing how much of that stuff that you're carrying. And then, um, yeah. And then just, you know, going on from there and, and like, you know, I said before, you know, money symbolizes so many things, so many things like self-worth, you know, how worthy do you feel of, of having abundance? Do you feel like you're not worthy of it at all? When you look at other people that are more wealthy, do you relate to them at all? Or are you like, oh, I just don't fit in with that. Like, that's not me. That just seems like a totally different, um, uh, just like a whole different, you know, th th those, the people who have money don't look like me. For instance, those are the kind of thoughts and beliefs that you want to start to to get into and see where some of that originated from. Yeah. What about you guys, Catherine and Jay? Any last advice or exercises for people to do to start to? Um, that's great, Cindy. That's I think that was that was perfect. But any advice you guys have for people just to start course correcting and start to like address these issues within themselves? Well, first and foremost, I think we might need to part two. But my <laughs> last one exactly right. Sure. Me, I think, yeah, I think this is such an important area because if you can crack this one, but I just want people to think: if you honestly think that what hasn't happened now today, or what you haven't achieved by now today, has got any impact on what you can achieve tomorrow, just look all around you. Today is the first day of the rest of your life, and everything up until here has just been a lesson. The last three years, and we talk about the last three years, I know for a lot of people it's been a lot longer, but the best way to create is to find out what you don't like. If you're in a position where you haven't got the money, the abundance that you want, absolutely brilliant, get creating, because there's examples every single where in nature, in the world, all around you, that what you've done up until now, you've accumulated a lot of lessons. And if that's got you to a place where you're not particularly happy, hallelujah, because now you've got all the skills to move forward and create what you do. So like the good old saying, when's the best time to plant a tree 20 years ago? When's the next best time to plant a tree today? So plant your tree to decide to do something about it today. You do not have to have the answers but really genuinely, honestly, open yourself up to asking for them to come to you and they'll come. Well said. You know, we talk about um, on, on your shows like the, the 5D economy, which is becoming abundant by helping other people become an abundant. And I, and I really believe, you know, we've been really blessed to be at the top of our game in multiple different ventures, sales organizations and things like that. But the problem I see with a lot of that and even looking at it from that perspective and maybe this is something that some of these companies can take a look at is they put a chart, for example, the top, and then they're the bottom. And so I think when people start to see themselves in the bottom long enough, they're like, I don't think I want to feel like that anymore. And then they jump out. So I think that, you know, if you are looking at it from a perspective of you're competing, if you look at money as a competition, it's not a healthy way to look at money. It's not because nobody ultimately ever wins that game all the time you know what i mean sometimes you'll win sometimes you won't if you just look at money as part of your existence and that's what you need and you remove it like okay well i gotta get to this level or i gotta get to this level because this person's there and you just look at it as your own level you're in the game you're in the game of life play the game of life you make 20 gazillion dollars because now you're not worried about someone else that you don't know in another country that's made 30 gazillion you're just not you don't even know you're not even processing their thoughts but when that's thrown in, which is the way life is right now, a lot of those, because um, I feel for that people that that yeah. see that. And again, I look at it from the perspective again, you know, I'm, I'm there, I know what it's like, but I feel for people. I'm like, ah, you know what? That's nice that we see ourselves there. But I look at some of the things I'm like, ah, that kind of sucks. Yeah, I could imagine 
doing that. And I could just only imagine what that feels like to, to know that. So maybe remove yourselves from positions. If you really want to do that, remove yourself from a position where you feel like you're being compared. Right. And then, and then do your own comparison, get your own stuff straight, get your own uh, body straight, your own mind straight, get to your level uh, playing field first. And then if you want to, and then jump back in and get into the competitive world if that's what you want to do. But don't start that way because it never ends well. <laughs> it doesn't, you know, it really, it just doesn't. It just doesn't. I, I think that would help people. But stop comparing yourself. And long when it answered there, I would say stop comparing the game of money. It's just part, it's just like, you don't compare what's in people's kitchens. You know what I mean? You know, you everybody eats differently. So just make your own money. Oh my God, that's, well, that's one of my favorite quotes. Comparison is the thief of all joy. Mm -hmm. um and you know i will say too you're right i know we have to hop off soon because cindy's zoom is going to be used for a class but um i will say it's funny what you perceive about other people often isn't the case either i just had an incident where somebody perceived that i because i'm on youtube and this very wealthy person and that's not true at all you know i do well but I, i'm not because of a sia but i'm not i'm not uh, you know so people you what you perceive off of people are your own insecurities not necessarily the truth you know, so that's great. Jay. Don't judge yourself. Don't compare yourself to other people. You know, other people have more bills than I have. And so maybe they make more money, but it doesn't mean they have less spending money. You know, so there's no, there's, it's just ridiculous. Don't compare yourself to anybody else. You are strong enough to take care of yourself. You wouldn't be on this planet if you couldn't do that. And as Catherine says, look at the animals are, the fox is not like jealous about the other fox's house, are they? <laughs> oh, not at all. Not when I've spoken to them anyway. <laughs> <laughs> You know, you're, look at your dog. Your dog doesn't care whether you live in a cardboard box or a mansion. You no, know, it's, like, it's it's uh, actually we lived in a bigger house. I think our dog would be pissed because he wants us in the same room all the time. So, you know, that would be even harder for him if we were a bit more spread out. So, so yeah, it, don't compare yourself. And you're, you're you know, and I, I yeah, let's do a part two because this is definitely going to be needed. So I'll say that in closing. If this has really intrigued you watching and you're having some revelations about yourself, share whatever you want to in the comment section about these revelations because it might help somebody else if you want to share them but if this is leading to more questions then please ask them in the comment section below so we can address them in our next episode because this is so important i think that this is kind of no pun intended but this is or maybe the pun is intended this is the root of um why people can't get out of the ma the 3d matrix and into the 5d um matrix so anyway guys well thank you guys so much this was incredible um i will talk to all of y'all soon bye everybody Bye-bye.